bunch of bison that were actually walking across the road right in front of me. And at another point in the road, I tried to photograph a small gold fox that started darting away from me as soon as he saw me, so I couldn't get a photo. So, llamas, elk, foxes, and bison. I wonder what other animals I could see along here if I don't get in nature's way. I had a dream the other night. I walked to a forest and there were neatly paved bicycle paths and trash cans every 50 feet and trash every ton. And then I saw a raccoon with a few little baby raccoons following her. It was so cute. I wish I had my camera. And she spoke to me. She said, thank you for not buying furs. I know you humans are pretty smart. You have to be able to figure out a way to keep yourselves warm without killing me. And I said, you know they don't do it for warmth. They do it for fashion. They do it for power. And she said, I know. But thank you anyway. Then I walked a little further and there I saw a stray cat. She still had her little neon collar on and she walked a few feet, stretched her front paws. Oh, she looked so darling. And then she walked right up to me and she said, thank you. And I said, for what? And then she looked at me for a moment. Her little ears were standing straight up. And then she said, you know, in some countries, I'm considered a delicacy. And I said, how do you know of these things? And she said, when someone eats one of you, word gets around. And then she said, in some countries, the cow is sacred. Wouldn't I love to see how you humans prepare them for slaughter, how you hang them upside down and split their throats so there's still beating hearts will drain out of the blood for you. And I said, I don't, do it. don't put me in that category. I don't eat meat. And she said, I know. And I walked deeper into the forest. I heard the crackling of fallen leaves under my step. The wind tunneled through as it flew past the bark and leaves. I walked, listened to the crack of dead branches under my feet, and I could hear the trees talk to me. And they said, thank you for keeping, letting me, keeping the endangered animals live here with us. We, we do think they are so pretty, and it would be a shame to see them go. And thank you for recycling paper because you're saving us for just a little while longer. We've been on this planet for so long, embedded in the earth. We do have souls, you know. We cling with our roots. We don't want to let go. And I said, but I don't do much. I don't do enough. And they said, we know, but we'll take what we can get. And I woke up in a sweat. So tell me about dolls, so tell me Pat Buchanan, so tell me Newt Finger, so tell me Jesse Helms. If you woke up from that dream, would you be in a sweat too? Do you even know why we should save the rainforest? Oh, preserve the delicate balance. What difference does it make? Just tear the whole forest down. Put in some orange groves or a concentrate orange juice could be a little cheaper. Did you know that medical researchers have a very, very hard time trying to come up with synthetic cures for diseases on their own? It first helps them out if they can find the substance in nature, and a tree that appears in a rainforest may be the only one of its species, or one like it may be two miles away instead of right next to it. I wonder how many cures we've destroyed to plant more orange groves. Serves us right. You know my motives aren't selfless. I, I know these things are worthwhile in my life. I'd like to find a cure to these diseases before I die of them. And I'm not a vegetarian because I think it's wrong to kill an animal unless I have to. I also know that the excess protein pulls the calcium away from my bones and gives me osteoporosis. And the excess fat gives me heart attacks. And I also know that we could be feeding ten times more people with the same resources used for meat production. You know, I know you're looking at me and calling me an extremist, but I'm sitting here, looking around me, looking at the destruction caused by family values, and thinking that the right, moral, non-violent decisions are also those extreme ones. 
everything is linked here. We destroy our animals, we destroy our plants, we destroy our earth, we're even destroying our air. We wreak havoc on the soil, on the atmosphere, we dump our wastes into our lakes, we pop aerosol cans and exhaust pipes. And you tell me I'm extreme. And I'm beginning to think that we just keep doing it because we don't know how to stop. And deep inside we feel the pain of all that we've killed. And we try to control it by popping a chemical filled painkiller. We live through the guilt by taking caffeine, nicotine, morphine. And we keep ourselves thin with saccharin. And we keep ourselves sane with our alcohol poisoning. And when that's not enough, maybe a line of coke. Maybe shoot ourselves in the head in front of the mirror in the master bedroom. Or maybe take some pills, walk into the garage, turn on the car, and just fall asleep. In the wild, you have no power over anyone else. Now that we're civilized, we create our own wild. Maybe when we have all this power, the only choice we have is to destroy ourselves. And so we do.